Hello, my name's Camilla and I'm a welfare assistant here at Battersea. I'll be showing you how to knit this adorable mouse for your cat. Some cats will enjoy to play with this on their own and others will enjoy a fetch game with small toys. You will need some lightweight DK yarn in both a main colour and a contrast colour, some stuffing which you can get in any craft shop, a darning needle, a 3.5mm crochet hook, a 4mm and 3.5mm needle. We're using circular needles here, but you can use any type you like. Step 1. First, you'll need to cast on 7 stitches. I'm using the long tail cast on method here, but you can use any method that you're most comfortable with. Then to start your mouse, you'll have to knit the first row and purl the second. Since this pattern is worked in stockinette stitch, you'll be purling every even row. Once this initial setup is complete, it's time to start your increases. Step two. All of the increases in this pattern are done along the center of your rows. And you increase by two stitches in every knit row. The increases here are done by knitting through the front and the back of each increased stitch, which is written in the pattern as KFB. I'll show you how to do this now. To start, knit two stitches. For your first increase, you go through the front of the stitch as you normally would, and then, without taking the stitch off the needle, you just continue and go through the back of the same stitch. This turns one stitch into two. You do two of these in a row, so I'll just show you again. Go through the front of the stitch, and then through the back of the same stitch to increase. To finish this row, knit three stitches. So now you should have nine stitches on your needles. As with every even row, you just purl right along the next row. The next row is an increase row again. So now that we have nine stitches on the needle, the centre is further in. So you knit three, do your two increases as shown before, and knit four to complete the row. Follow this with another purl now. Then you just continue like this, increasing by two stitches in each increase row until you have 31 stitches on your needles. As you go along, the centre seam where your increases are will become more apparent through this ridge along the back of the mouse, which will help guide you on where you should be increasing. Step three. Now we have 31 stitches on our needles and have purled the next even row. It's time to set up your rows so that they're ready for the decreases for the bottom of the mouse's body. To do this, you just need to knit an entire row and then purl an entire row. Super simple. Step four. For the decreases in these rows, they need to be leaning in different directions on either side of the center ridge. For the first half of your decrease row, the pattern asks that we SKPO. Slip a stitch, knit a stitch, and pass the slip stitch over. To start this row, Knit one, then slip a stitch knitwise, knit a stitch, and then pass your slip stitch over the knitted stitch. This will turn two stitches into one. You need to do this seven times, and that will bring you into the centre of the row. Now the decreases are going to change direction. So knit one stitch to get started, and then start decreasing. These decrease stitches are simply knitting two together, so you just need to knit through two stitches instead of one. Do this seven times. Finish the row with a knit stitch and you should have 17 stitches on your needles. Purl the next row as normal. For the next decrease row, knit one and then slip a stitch knitwise, knit a stitch and pass the slip stitch over three times to bring you to the center of the row. Knit three, and then knit two stitches together three times and knit one to finish the row. You should have 11 stitches on your needles. Purl the next row to finish the body. Now take your darning needle and pull the working yarn through all of your stitches on your needle and pull it nice and tight to finish off the body of the mouse. Leave a nice long tail here so that you can use it to sew it up when you've finished. Step five. Next, it's time for the ears. You just need to cast on three stitches. 
again using whichever cast on method you prefer. Because you want the ears to stay nice and small, every row is going to be an increase row here. In row one, knit through the front and back of the stitch as before and then knit two. Start with an increase again in the next row, knitting through the front and the back of the stitch and purling three. Knit through the front and the back of the first stitch in row three and knit four. And do your final increase using the same method and purl five. You should now have seven stitches on your needles. Finish the ear by knitting the last row and then pulling your working yarn through all of the stitches on your needle and pulling tight. Leave a long tail so that you can use this to attach the ears to the body. Repeat this twice so that you have two ears. Step six. Now it's time to make the tail. Use a crochet hook to chain 24 stitches to make a tail here. But if you don't crochet, feel free to plait three strands together to make the tail. So we use both strands held together when making the tail for our mice in Battersea so that they're nice and hard wearing. So just tie a slip knot and chain 24 stitches to make a nice long tail. Pull the stitches through to complete and cut your yarn leaving enough to attach it to the body. Step seven. Now it's time to put your mouse together. First, you'll need to sew the body of the mouse from either end, leaving a gap of about one inch to put the stuffing in. Using the tail ends of the yarn, sew along the edges. Since this is the bottom of the mouse, it doesn't matter if it isn't perfectly neat. Once you've got a small gap remaining, fill your mouse up using your stuffing to make it nice and fat. Pull the ends of your yarn through and into the body of the mouse so that they're not visible. To attach the ears, we use both threads so that it's nice and secure and attach one on either side of the mouse's head. As with the body, pull the remaining yarn through into the body of the mouse so that it's hidden. Attach the tail in the same way, making sure to pass your needle through both the body of the mouse and the tail so that it's nice and secure, as cats love to pull the mouse by its tail. Finally, using the contrast colour, it's time to give your mouse a nose and some whiskers. Using the darning needle, thread the contrast colour through the cast-on edge of the mouse's body, making sure it's nice and secure. Then wrap the yarn around the end until all of the original colour is covered and you have a nice round nose. Tie the end of the yarn in a knot above the nose and cut the ends to the same side. You can then unravel these ends to make cute little whiskers for your mouse. Let's see if Lenny, our Battersea kitten, likes our mouse. With a knitted toy like this, just watch out for your cat's claws getting stuck.